Okay, it's been about a year and a half since the first five tips to build the ultimate home coffee station video. So today I thought I'd share five more tips to build the ultimate home coffee station. But first, let's recap what I covered in that original video in under a minute. Tip number one, what are you brewing? Consider all the different brewing methods you'll want to incorporate into your coffee bar, from espresso to pour overs and everything in between. Tip number two, allocating space and the perfect coffee bar. You'll want to measure the dimensions of your largest equipment and make sure that you have a bar or sideboard that fits the depth of the item. You'll also want ample space for all of your other equipment and pieces and room for your own personal workflow. Tip number three, workflow. You'll want to think about how you'll move from left to right or right to left and consider the placement of your grinder, knockbox, tamping station, etc. relative to your espresso machine itself. Tip number four, keeping it clean. Bar mats are a great tool that I use to keep my station clean. In addition to that, I have this nice little brush set that I buy every couple months to replace the old brushes that I keep near my knockbox. And maybe most importantly, the Mocha Mondays puck screen to keep my machines group clean. Link to these in the description. And tip number five, aesthetics and decor. Be sure to personalize and make your coffee bar your own. I think at this point, mine has this sort of signature black wall, warm medicine bulbs, and walnut accents from the shelves to the sideboard to the tools that I use. All right, so now here are five more tips to build the ultimate home coffee station. Tip number six, electricals. If you've got a lot of different machines like I do here, then you'll need a way to keep those cables relatively well organized. My biggest secret to keeping cables easily accessible yet clean is to use a massive surge protector. I like to use this one from Amazon Basics, and I I think it's a five foot or roughly one and a half meter long surge protector that I actually keep mounted to the coffee bar itself, or in this case, the workbench. This way I can keep the cables close to the machines and I don't have to deal with trying to figure out which cable is for which machine versus the traditional sort of surge protector where it might just be one big mess. Tip number seven is lighting. Now this might be a weird one and might not apply to the majority of you, but I take a lot of pictures and videos of this corner. Yet, it is dark and it's quite hard to light nicely, especially since I don't have a lot of natural light facing this area. Right now, with this current setup, the best way I can light the bar is to essentially bounce my key light off of the ceiling to create a soft light situation, and of course having a secondary light as a key light for when I'm filming like this. In the near future, I think I might also decide to move the light tubes off of the small wall on the side and mount them underneath the GroveMate shelves pointing downwards to create a nice soft lighting effect going down the wall. The Edison bulbs here are great, but are just very warm, which of course this does lead to that signature black and warm tone that you might see on my Instagram page, but is not necessarily a look you want in everything and is not going to be great for an all-around purpose lighting situation. And tip number eight is water. One thing to keep in mind is what kind of water filling method you use. Obviously, when it comes to a coffee bar and optimal organization, a plumbed-in line would be great. But for most of us, that's probably not an option. For most people, you will likely resort to filling your machine with something like a pitcher. Now, most water tanks on espresso machines will either be on the back or the top areas of the machine, so generally you might want to try and keep that area as clear as possible. This may be a challenge if your machine is under a kitchen cabinet, or in my case might be closer to shelf now that I've added a workbench on top of the sideboard. Although, if you do have a machine like the Lilith Bianca where the water tank is movable, you can consider placing it onto the sides, either the left or the right side, depending on how easily it may be to fill it up. For the longest time, I have been using a Brita filter, but recently I started using Third Wave Water, who also happens to be sponsoring this video. Now, in the past, it was not a practical solution to frequently buy gallons of distilled water to refill my machine with, but I found a little bit of a hack that has made this process just a little bit easier. So instead of buying individual gallons of water, I I've decided to just buy a five gallon water jug to the setup, which requires a lot less refilling as frequently. And I got this simple little device off Amazon for like $14. Now I just fill a huge cup like this cinema popcorn cup with my third wave water and use that to fill my machines. Not only is this process easy, but it does also give me the best mineral solution for espresso. And the five gallon jug does last a very long time before needing to get a refill. Once again, thanks to third wave water for sponsoring this video. Tip number nine is storage. So for my coffee bar, while seemingly organized, isn't super organized once you get into the sideboard itself. And that's just because I have a lot of coffee stuff. There are plenty of different methods for organizing your stuff from shelves to pegboards to drawers to a sideboard like I'm using here. Personally, I think the more that can be hidden, the better as it does create a cleaner look. So in my sideboard, I have all of the cups in the top drawer. I have some extra items like pitchers, saucers, and tools in the second drawer. And I've been keeping all of my old coffee bean bags from this past year in the bottom drawer, just for fun. And both the side drawers of this sideboard are just about for everything else. I think pegboards could also be a great storage option 
to utilize wall space, and there are plenty of cool pegboard accessories that can be 3D printed specifically for that purpose. And finally, tip number 10 is smart plugs and devices. Now, this has been my quote unquote hack for never having to wait for my machine to warm up in the morning. In my coffee corner, I use these Casa smart plugs that I can program with my phone and Google Assistant, and I have it set to turn on about an hour before I'm out of bed, and to also auto turn off about two hours into the morning to save electricity. I also use smart Edison bulbs and smart LED strips that I have programmed to also auto turn on and off with the Google Assistant. And those are five more tips to help you design the ultimate home coffee station. If you have any other tips, be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like if you did, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one.